Tonight we are going to pray according to the ten manifold of mercy. What is the manifold of mercy? The manifold of mercy is what mercy does in your life. What mercy does in your life. When mercy comes upon you, what then begins to happen in your life? Number one, when mercy comes upon you, it gives you hope. The Bible speaks in Romans 5 verse 5. I want Romans 5 verse 5, King James Version. Romans 5 verse 5, King James Version. The Bible says, and hope maketh not ashamed. And hope maketh not ashamed. What does the word say? When there is hope, there is no shame. Full stop. Where there is hope, there is no shame. If there is shame, hope is not there. Because the word says, hope maketh not ashamed. So where there is hope, there is no shame. Where there is hope, there is no shame. You can be going through shame. Because one day your hope is up, the other day you lose your hope. And what does mercy do? Mercy gives you hope. And when there is hope, there is no shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are so many women now that are going through shame. They are going through shame. It means mercy is not in operation in your life yet. The Bible says where there is hope, there is no shame. Hope makes not ashamed. You cannot be going through shame and also have hope. The two can never coexist. Look at me and look at me very well. I am saying to you, my dear at home, that if you have hope, you cannot be going through shame. If there is shame, your hope is up today, tomorrow it is down. But if you have constant hope, an immovable hope, there is no way you can have hope and also have shame. The Bible says hope and shame, they can never coexist. It is just like faith and doubt. The two can never coexist. You cannot be in faith and also having doubt at the same time. The moment you begin to doubt, there is completely no faith. The moment you have faith, you can never doubt. The same, it is the same. Where there is hope, there is no shame. Where shame is, it means there is no hope. So the Bible says, mercy brings hope. Are you here, somebody? Mercy brings hope. Psalm 33, verse 18 to 19, New King James Version. The Bible says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy, my God, to deliver their soul from death. And to keep them alive in famine. The Bible says, when mercy comes, hope comes. You will see people, today they are believing that, no, I know the Lord will heal me. Tomorrow they are saying, but can I be healed? Will I ever be healed? When will I be healed? Hope has, has now gone. There is no longer hope. But when mercy comes, you have an immovable hope. Your hope is steady. It doesn't matter what you're going through, but your hope is intact. You know that the Lord has told me this, therefore I have my hope intact. I know that the Lord will do it. That is what mercy can do. Are you here, somebody? That is what mercy can do. Therefore, if you have mercy in your life, we will see it by what you say. In the words that you say, are you still hopeful or not? Are you still hopeful or not? And something that is so related to hope is the strength. Because when you lose strength, you also lose hope. And guess what? Mercy also strengthens you. When there is mercy, you are strengthened. We have so many women now. Just because of what they are going through. Now they have lost all their strength. Now they are weak. Now, you know, sometimes, you know, when things, when you have a burden, you will not even realize that why am I feeling this way? But it's because something is weighing you down so much. That cannot happen to a girl who is loaded with mercy. 
When you have mercy, you are strengthened. When you have mercy, it doesn't matter what you go through. You know that my redeemer is alive. You know that you cannot move me. You know that my strength is intact. Why? Because there is mercy. That is what mercy does. When mercy is in you, oh, mercy gives you strength. When you were becoming weak, mercy strengthens you. Are you here, somebody? Mercy strengthens you. Psalm 86, verse 16. The Bible says, All tend to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maid servant. Save the son of your maid servant. David is saying, Lord, tend to me. Give me mercy so that I can be strengthened. So that I can be strengthened. The Bible says, Abraham never staggered in unbelief. He was standing strong in faith. He was not weakened. He was not weak. It did not matter. After 10 years, he was still standing in strength. He was not standing weak. He was still standing in strength. Are you here somebody? He was still standing in strength. After 15 years, his strength was intact. After 20 years, he still stood with his strength intact. 25 years, he knew that, no, 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 the one who told me he's worthy, the one who told me he's faithful, he cannot tell me and fail to do it. He cannot tell me he will do it and fail to do it. So my daughter, why are you weak? It means mercy is not in you. When mercy is in you, mercy will give you strength. Are you here, somebody? Mercy will give you strength. Mercy will give you strength. There are women, a very small thing, already they are crying. There is no strength. There is no strength. It's not because no women are emotional. No, no, no. Why is it that some of us don't just cry? Don't we have the same emotions? We do. But strength, your strength has been affected. And so you were crying because your strength is gone. Now you're weak. Even your faith is weak. But the Bible says when mercy comes, there is strength. When mercy comes, you are strengthened. When mercy comes, you are strengthened. You who are watching on Facebook, tonight you will be strengthened. There is someone who is now losing their hope. Even their strength is gone after tonight. I said after tonight, you are receiving divine strength. In the name of Jesus, I said divine strength. In the name of Jesus, you will have the strength. You will have divine strength. In the name of Jesus, you will not grow weary. You will not grow weary. I said you will not grow weary. In the name of Jesus, you will not grow weary. What does mercy do? What does mercy do? Mercy brings provision. Miraculous provision. Miraculous provision. The Bible speaks in 1 Kings chapter 17. <laughs> the Bible six speaks from verse 6. How there was a widow. And the widow was on her last meal. Are you here somebody? The widow was on her last meal. And the Bible says... The Lord spoke to Elijah, not to the widow. This is the irony. Hear me, my daughter, and hear me very well. The Lord did not speak to the widow. The Lord spoke to Elijah. And to Elijah, the Lord said, I have already spoken to someone who will provide for you. And he led Elijah to the widow. My God, the Lord showed me something today. Do you know when Elijah was appearing to the widow, he was not just appearing as a prophet. He was a vessel of mercy. Are you here somebody? Are you here somebody? And the Lord was saying, tell your daughters, 
to most of them. I send my vessels of mercy. But because they are blind, they do not even realize that the one that I have sent is actually my vessel of mercy. I want this vessel of mercy to bring them mercy. But because they do not realize, they behave like this widow. The Bible speaks about this widow. When Elijah came, this widow thought he was speaking to just any man. He thought he speak, she's speaking to the men she's used to. So she was saying, ah, you know what? I have nothing. And then this man does not just want water. He also wants me to prepare what I don't have. What I should use with my family, with my son. And then I should give to this man, a stranger I have just met today. She did not know that speaking to her was a vessel of mercy. My God. My God, tonight it is my prayer that your eyes will be opened. It is my prayer that your spiritual antennas will be opened. You will know that the one speaking to you is a vessel of mercy. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? This woman, although she did not want to do it, but because the vessel of mercy insisted, she ended up doing it. She did not know that actually mercy had visited her home. My God. Mercy had visited her. Mercy even went in her house to eat on her table. And yet she did not know. Are you here somebody? Are you here somebody? Are you here somebody? Tonight I bring you mercy. Right at home I bring you mercy. In the name of Jesus, mercy in your bank account, mercy in your business, mercy in your fridge. In the name of Jesus, mercy in your wardrobe, mercy in your shoe rack. In the name of Jesus, you did not hear me. I said mercy in your wardrobe, mercy in your shoe rack, mercy in your deep freezer, mercy in your fridge. In the name of Jesus, in your home, mercy. I said in your home, mercy, in the name of Jesus. Mercy brings miraculous provision. Mercy brings miraculous provision. But for the miraculous provision to come, you need to recognize the vessel of mercy. You need to recognize the vessel of mercy. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? When Saul was anointed, it's not like he did not have mercy. So had mercy, but he lost it along the way. He became familiar to the vessel of mercy. To the extent that when the vessel of mercy says, wait, so would be like, but I'm the king. You mean me? I should be waiting on Samuel for more than seven days? Me, a king? Has he forgotten who I am? Has he forgotten? He had become familiar. He forgot that he was nothing but a tall, handsome man until Samuel came in his life. Are you here, somebody? He forgot that he was merely a son of Kish. Maybe when people talk about him, they would talk because he was so tall. And the Bible says he was handsome, but he was not a king. He never even imagined that he would be anointed a king. And the same vessel that the Lord used to anoint him, he became familiar. To an extent that when Samuel said, wait, we are going to offer together, wait. So waited the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. I'm sure at the time he was going to offer the sacrifice, Samuel had left home. He was coming. But now he was impatient. Now he was familiar. Because if he, he had that idea, if still he had the revelation that this one is a vessel of mercy in my life. This one is a vessel. This one is not just a man. Are you here somebody? Are you here somebody? You need to discern. There are some people that you meet. They are just men. They are just women in your life. Then there are some people that when you meet, your life changes. Your life changes. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? There are some people when you meet them, your life changes. They are vessels. 
They are loaded with mercy. They are loaded with your healing. They are loaded with your miracles. And you do not play with the vessel of mercy. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Vessels of mercy. They will bring you miraculous provisions. But you need to know that this one is a vessel of of mercy. You need to know that these ones, they are sent with a special purpose in my life. This widow, just by feeding one man, just one meal. Are you here, somebody? One meal. One. She never lacked. She had food. In the same time of famine, she had food. In the same time of drought, when everyone else was crying, we don't have food. Guess what? In her home, she always had food. In her home, she was always full. They were not fasting because there is no food. Are you here, somebody? They were not fasting because there is no food. There was always food. Because a vessel of mercy appeared in her life and she received the mercy. Even though she did not want to at first, but she ended up receiving it. Tonight I pray for you, my daughter, that the Lord will miraculously provide for you. In the name of Jesus, when mercy comes, you will not be struggling. Where will I get rent? Where will I get school fees? Where will I get food? No. Mercy will provide for you. Miraculously, mercy will provide. If what you want is rent, somehow, mercy will bring you rent. It will not only be rent that you will receive. You will receive enough for rent and enough for school fees. In the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to someone. I said I'm speaking to someone. Tonight, mercy will bring you miraculous provisions. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I want you to rise up on your feet and we are going to fire prayer. Oh God, let mercy give me hope. Let mercy strengthen me. In the name of Jesus, miraculous provisions. 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 In the name of Jesus, tonight, may the Lord show you mercy. Tonight, may the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus, South Sudan, may the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus, South Sudan, may the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord show you mercy tonight. May the Lord show you mercy tonight. May the Lord show you mercy tonight. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord show you mercy. May the Lord show you mercy. May the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus, mercy upon you tonight. Mercy upon you tonight. May mercy strengthen you. May mercy give you hope. In the name of Jesus, by reason of the mercy at work in your life. Miraculous provisions. Miraculous provisions. Miraculous provisions. In the name of Jesus, miraculous provisions. In the name of Jesus, miraculous provisions. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let mercy be upon you today. Let mercy be upon you today. Let mercy be upon you today. In the name of Jesus, tonight, mighty God, grant your daughters mercy. In the name of Jesus, grant us mercy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, 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 your mercy, O oh God, your mercy, O oh God, your mercy, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, your mercy, Father, your mercy, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I want you to say with me, O oh Lord. Grant me mercy. Oh Lord, grant me mercy. May mercy strengthen me. 
May mercy give me hope. May mercy miraculously provide for me. Amen. 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 We are still going. Number four. Mercy transforms people. Mercy transforms people. When mercy is upon you, there is a tangible, visible transformation. Everyone can see that truly you are changed. Truly you are transformed. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? The Bible speaks of Paul, the one who was so, the one who was killing believers. When mercy located him, he was completely transformed. You will never again hear of so, now Paul, killing believers. You will never again hear what he was doing before he met the Lord. Before mercy met him. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? We have people now, tongue-talking, prayerful, fasting always, and yet lies from morning to evening. All they are doing is lies. They are in church, destitute of mercy. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? There are some people, before they knew God, they would speak so many things. The moment you have a difference with them, you will see. And now they are in church. Still now, they are even proud that me, you will see. There is no mercy. There is no mercy. That is not something to be proud of. That is actually something to be ashamed of. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? When there is mercy, you are transformed. When there is mercy, there is transformation. You cannot be the same. Before you knew God, you were stingy. Now you know God. Even now, you are stingy. Are you here, somebody? Before you knew God, there was so much jealousy. Now you know God. Still, you are even more jealous. Uh -uh. There is no mercy. Mercy must transform you. Mercy must change you. Are you here, somebody? Mercy should change you from inside out. Are you here, somebody? Mercy should begin from inside. You should be transformed. Your heart should be changed. Your mind should be renewed. You cannot be thinking the way you were thinking before mercy came. And now you are thinking the same. It is not mercy. It means there is no mercy. Are you here, somebody? It means there is no mercy. Where there is mercy, there is transformation. I said where there is mercy, there is transformation. Some of you, it is not you who need to be transformed. It is your children. It is your husband. It is your sister. It is your cousin, your niece, your nephew, your aunt, your uncle. They need to be transformed. Guess what? Tonight we are going to pray. You will be transformed and everyone else that you need to be transformed. After this service. I said after this service, they will be transformed. In the name of Jesus. I said they will be transformed. In the name of Jesus. Mercy should transform your thinking. There are people in church. The way they think. You know that mm -mm, there is no mercy here. There is completely no mercy here. Even the way you think should be transformed. Mercy should transform even the way you think. It is not right that unbelievers should be smart. Smarter than the church. It is not right. It's not supposed to be like that. It means mercy is lacking. When you make a decision, it should be a decision that even your thinking, we can see that the way you think is not the same. You are transformed. The way you were thinking before you came to church, you, before you knew Christ, should not be the same way you think now. Your thinking now should be transformed. I said your thinking now should be transformed. Mercy brings transformation. Are you here, somebody? Mercy transforms people. I said mercy transforms people. Your life should be transformed. Your life should be changed. When people look at you, they should be saying, ah, we used to know a girl. 
it looks like it is this one. But they see your mannerism, it is not what they are used to. The way you speak is not what they are used to. They should be thinking that is it truly ah or not. Not that they meet you. The way you were making noise that time, now you are even worse. They even say, I knew that it is you. I heard your noise. Mercy has not worked. Are you here, somebody? Mercy has not worked. Mercy has not worked. The way you are shouting, they even know that hey, the way that one shouts, it's like my neighbor. You know, she used to shout like that. And they see you, it's really you. And yet now, you are in the church. It means mercy is not at work. Mercy should transform you. Mercy should transform your thinking. If you cannot think it, you cannot be it. Let me say that one again. If you cannot think it, you cannot be it. If you cannot think about it, that this can be you, you will never be like that. Everything starts in your mind. Your thought process. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Your mind and your heart, your heart and your thinking, the two should be on the same level. That is integrity. So the way you think, your mind, there must be a transformation. When there is that transformation, indeed, mercy it has, is at work in your life. Mercy cannot be at work in your life, and yet your thinking is not transformed. Your manners are the same. Your character is the same. Something is wrong. You might be a destitute of mercy. Be careful, lest you are marked. <laughs> Let's not even go there. Be careful, lest you fall in the hands of men. Mercy should transform you. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, my dear ladies? Mercy should transform you. Just by listening to this message of mercy, your husband should be wondering, what happened to my wife? Are you here, somebody? Your husband should be thinking, what happened to my wife? My wife is transformed. She was not like this. But there is something that has happened upon her. There is a transformation. That is what mercy can do. Are you here, somebody? That is what mercy can do. This one, I want us to pray about it. On its own. That Lord, let mercy transform me. The way I think. Let it be transformed. The way I behave, let mercy transform me. Let mercy totally turn me around. In the name of Jesus, I want you to fire prayer. I want you to fire prayer. Tonight, mercy must transform you. In the name of Jesus, mercy must transform you. In the name of Jesus, mercy must transform you. In the name of Jesus, mercy must transform you. In the name of Jesus, Mercy must transform you in the name of Jesus. Mercy. Let mercy transform you. Let mercy transform you. Even physically, let mercy transform you. Even physically, let mercy transform you. In the name of Jesus, let mercy transform you. In the name of Jesus, let mercy transform you. Even physically, let mercy transform you. In the name of Jesus, let mercy transform you tonight. In the name of Jesus, let mercy transform you. Let mercy transform you. Let mercy transform you. In the name of Jesus, let mercy transform you. In the name of Jesus, let mercy transform you. In the name of Jesus, let mercy transform you. In the name of Jesus, let mercy transform you. Let mercy transform you. Let mercy transform you. In the name of Jesus. Let mercy transform you. Let mercy transform you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. We are on number what? I want to see if you are following. We are on number what? Number five. Mercy rebukes you. I said mercy rebukes you. Second Samuel verse 20, chapter 24 verse 10. 
I want you to give me NIV. 2 Samuel 24, verse 10. NIV. My God. David was conscience stricken after he had counted the fighting people. And he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. Now, Lord, I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. I want to give you a background. Give me the same scripture in NLT. NLT. But after he had taken the census, David's conscience began to bother him. And he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly by taking this census. Please forgive my guilt, Lord, for doing this foolish thing. Here is a king. Are you here, somebody? Yes. This time, David was reigning over the whole Israel. And David called Joab, the commander of his army. And David said, Joab, I want you to go throughout Israel and Judah. And I want you to take a census. I want to know how many fighting men do I have? The commander said, Master, are you sure? Should we really do this? The commander was saying, Master, what you want to do is wrong. But David insisted. And because he insisted, Joab went with his team. And the Bible says, listen to this, somebody. The Bible says, for them to finish the whole census, it took them nine months, 20 days. That's a long time. And then they came with the results. The moment they came with the results, the Bible says his heart condemned him. He now was conscious stricken. He realized all of a sudden that, oh my God, what have I done? That is mercy. Are you here, somebody? That is mercy. Do you know that it is possible to do very wrong things? Very wrong things and not even be cautious stricken that you do wrong things and you continue doing wrong. You don't even see that you are wrong. Yeah. David did not kill a, a man this time. This was different from Bathsheba. He had not committed adultery. You would understand that time. Are you here, somebody? He had not killed anyone. You would understand. He had not stolen. You would understand. David had just asked for people to be numbered. And he was guilt stricken. It is mercy for your heart to be telling you you are wrong. Are you here, somebody? It is mercy for your heart to be condemning you that no, here you are wrong. I know some of you, you are saying, but there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you, the same Bible says, if you say you, are, you have not seen, there is no truth in you. You are a liar. The same Bible, right? The same New Testament, right? Your heart should condemn you. Your heart should rebuke you. You know when your heart is rebuking you, it is easier for you to change. When your heart is not rebuking you, when someone else has to come and rebuke you, it is difficult to change. Because you will now think, no, you know anyone is entitled to their opinion. No, you are wrong, you are wrong. Are you here, somebody? You are wrong, you are wrong. Wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter whether it's their opinion or not, but when you are wrong, you are wrong. And can I tell you something? Everyone is bound to make a mistake. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, self rushers Everyone is bound to make a mistake. So don't think you are too spiritual. That you know me, I am too spiritual. I cannot make mistakes. You are the one making the most. You are the one making the most. Because your heart does not even condemn you. Every one of us. At some point, you make a mistake. When you have made a mistake, you see what is amazing to this scripture. It took nine months, 20 days. Are you here, somebody? It took nine months, 20 days. 
for David to now realize that, oh my God, I have made a mistake. Had he known when Joab was saying, my master, should we really do this? He would have said, uh uh, let's not do this. All the time, people were busy going up and down Israel, going up and down Judah, doing census. He was okay. But the day the results came, the Bible says, he was now guilt stricken. He realized, and I love the prayer. Give me again, verse 10. See how the whole king goes to God. This is the king. The king whose conscience has bothered him. He says to the Lord, Lord, I have sinned greatly by taking this census. He even quantifies it that this is a great sin. Are you here, somebody? He could have gone to God and say, God, I, have, I made a mistake. He did not say, God, I made a mistake. Do you see I made a mistake on this scripture? No. He did not say, God, I made a mistake. No. He said, God, I have sinned greatly. I have done a foolish thing. My God. My God. If only our heart can bother us when we are wrong. If only we can be like David. No wonder this man, whether it's plenteous mercy, you will see David. Surrounding mercy, you will see David. Sure mercies, you will see David. Great mercy, you will see David. A vessel of mercy, you will see David. No wonder he was operating in any level of mercy. Whatever, when that time, what is needed is, is great mercy. He will be in great mercy. When that time he needs to be surrounded by mercy, he will be in surrounding mercy. When that time he needs plenteous mercy, plenteous mercy will appear. The heart of David. Do you think after you've repented like this, after you've repented like this, do you think the Lord can still be holding on to that? No. David repented himself. When prophet God was coming, the Bible now says, prophet God came with the three options. Has the Lord ever punished you by giving you options? Let me just ask you. Let's forget about options on punishment. Even when miracles are coming your way, does the Lord give you multiple choice? No. But look at David. His punishment, there is even multiple choice. My God, the punishment of David, it even came with multiple choice. A, B, or C. And David says, no, I'll add D. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Multiple choice. A man who walks in mercy. He was already rebuked. He was, imagine, you go to God and you say, Lord, what I've done is a very foolish thing. I have greatly sinned. Please forgive me. The Lord even gave him a multiple choice of how to punish him. Punishment don't come in multiple choice. The Lord will just punish. The Lord will just punish. Even people that are not wrong, he would have just punished. A plague would have just hit the whole nation for a wrong of David. No multiple choice, no warning, nothing. But to David, the man who has a conscience that is able to rebuke him, the Lord said, should I do A, seven years of drought? Should I do B, 30 days your enemies should be chasing you? Should I do C, a plague? And then David says, mm, mm -mm. no, Lord. D, let there be a D. I better fall in your hand. Because in your hands, there is great mercy. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Your heart should rebuke you. It is not a weakness. It is actually a strength. Are you here, somebody? It is not a weakness. It is actually a strength. You should be able to say, no, 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 no. Here, the way I was looking at this, I was wrong. I shouldn't have said this to you. Imagine in church, if everyone would be like this, you know, there would be no enemies. There would always be love. Because you wrong your sister, you go to your sister. Your sister wrongs you, they come. But people just, you know, we just push things under the carpet. 
And then you think life will be continuing as normal. Tomorrow you do another thing. You, you, know, you know you just sweep it under the carpet. And you think you are safe. You will do another thing and you are piling up. Your sins are piling up. You are not addressing anything. You think, no, I'm born again. So because I'm born again, it is okay. I worshipped the Lord after all. So when I worship the Lord, it is... No, 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 no. Mercy was, David was a great worshipper. He was a great prayer warrior. And yet he went to God and said, God, mm -mm, what I've done is not right. I have sinned greatly. I have sinned greatly. And I have done something foolish. Please, Lord, forgive me. Please, Lord, forgive me. I pray for you, my daughter, tonight, that by the reason of mercy, mercy will rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, that mercy will rebuke you. For you to be rebuked, it takes mercy. And for you, that when the Lord rebukes you, and you really see that I am wrong, it takes mercy. Are you listening to me? Did you hear that? It's two ways. Number one, you are wrong. And your conscience bothers you. That is mercy. Number two, you are wrong. Your conscience has not bothered you yet. But you see it now. Someone is sent to you like Nathan, the way he was sent to David. And you see that, oh my God, really, I am wrong. And you repent. It takes mercy. So many people, they are never wrong. It is always my sister. No, it's not me, but it's because my sister did this. So I was just, you know, it was just a reaction. It is not me. No, 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 no. No, it cannot be me. I'm not the one in the wrong. It is them. All the times it is. And when you do that, four fingers are pointing back at you. Are you here, somebody? When someone comes and they say, mm, my sister here, you're wrong. Accept it, you are wrong. Repent, that is mercy. When your conscience bothers you, don't just say, no, I am bothered. No, you know I will pray. No, it is not I, I will pray. Go back to the one you wronged. Make things right. The Bible says, when you carry your seed, my God, and you get to the altar, you want to give your seed. The Bible says, when you remember, that there is a, a problem with your brother. You remember there is an issue with your brother. The Bible did not say, give the seed and pray, and then I'll make it right. No. Are you here, somebody? The Bible says, go. Find him. The Bible did not even say, go to your pastor. Uh -uh. Did the Bible say, go repent to your pastor? No. The Bible says, go to the one you have wronged. Make it right, yes, yeah, first. Then come back and give on the altar. Are you here, somebody? Go back to the one you have wronged. So many people now, they are crying. Now they're saying, mercy, mercy, mercy. They wonder, mercy, even mercy is not answering. Why? Go back to the one you wronged. Make it right first. Because you are crying to the same God. They are also crying to the same God. And guess what? They are crying because of the pain you have caused. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? So don't just say, no, this is one of mercy. No, you will, you will be a destitute of mercy. Go back. Make it right first. Go back. Apologize first. Are you here, somebody? Sorry is just five letters. Sorry. Sorry. I told you the other day, sorry from my mouth just comes. When I'm wrong, sorry. Whether I'm not wrong, but you think I am wrong, I'm sorry. Are you here, somebody? Sorry. Your heart should heal. I should tell you you're sorry. Your heart should be healed. Are you here, somebody? So if your heart to heal, it will take me saying sorry, then I better just come and say, I'm sorry. Are you here, somebody? Then go to God and repent. Don't just run to God. No, I will repent. Uh-uh. The one that you spoke so harshly to, when they look at you, all they think is, eh, my sister can even say I am foolish. So they see you praying in church. They are even wondering, eh, so God, 
you still hear her prayer. After the way she spoke to me, that prayer you are hearing it, and yet you are so spiritual. Oh God, forgive me. Go back first. Tell your husband, I'm sorry. Go back first. Tell your maid, I'm sorry, this was wrong. Go back first, some of you. You need to tell your mom, your parents, I am sorry, mom. I'm sorry, dad. This was wrong. Then come back to church. And then you will say, I'm the one you have shown mercy. Minus that, no mercy. Minus that, you will just be crying before the Lord with nothing to show. Go back first. Make things right first. Are you here, somebody? There are people now, they don't speak to their sister. Now, your sister, you grew up together. You were even sharing a bed at some point. Are you here, somebody? You were even sharing a, a bed at some point. You used to eat from the same plate. You were doing hide and seek with your sister. Before you knew all of us, your sister was there. And now, all of a sudden, yes, they did wrong. But go back, reconcile. Are you here, somebody? Reconcile and then cry for mercy. But there are some people, their own family, they are siblings. They have nothing to do with their siblings. And then they will come in church. It's just a matter of time. They will also have nothing to do with the church. It's just a matter of time. Because it is in them. If you can have nothing to do with your mother, the one who carried you nine months, it's just a matter of time. You also have nothing to do with all of us. It is in you. Are you here, somebody? It is part of who you are. Mercy should rebuke you. Are you here, somebody? Mercy should rebuke you. Mercy should make you want to make things right. Not no, I did that. Ah, it was a long time ago. And yet that thing that you did a long time ago, up to now people are crying because of that. Make it right first. Are you here, somebody? Make it right first. Then the Lord will show you mercy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Make it right first. I said make it right first. And then the Lord will show you mercy. In the name of Jesus. Mercy must rebuke you. I said mercy must rebuke you. In the mighty name of Jesus. What does mercy do? Mercy brings shocking results. It shocks people. Everyone is thinking. She is finished. Everyone is thinking. They will repossess that house. Everyone is thinking. Ah, her children. They will amount to nothing. <laughs> When mercy appears, that same child, I said that same child, you will see them soaring so high. In the name of Jesus, everyone is thinking, eh, 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 the way they are sick, they will die. When mercy appears, they will see your beautiful self appearing, walking properly. That is what mercy can do. Mercy shocks people with its results. Everyone knows you as that poor woman. That poor woman, when you go to their house, they know that today, ish, what is it that they want? Maybe today it is rooibos that they want. Tomorrow they are thinking, eh, maybe today they will say they don't have olive oil because she doesn't have cooking oil. They see you again, they are like, ish, eh, our neighbor. Every time, you know when they see your, your number, you know when it's your number, their phone is ringing and they look at your number. They even know what is it that they want again. <laughs> when mercy comes, I said when mercy comes, you are going to call them and you will say, my neighbor, I just want to bless you. I just want to bless you. What is it that you need? Should I pay the school fees for your child? I can pay for the whole year. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? That is mercy. That is mercy. When mercy comes, you're going to be saying, no, 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 which one is the most expensive school? I want my child to go to the most expensive school. When you are telling your neighbor, neighbor, how can I get the details for this school? They'll be thinking, do you want to maybe apply for a job? You will say, no. My child, 
is going there next year. I want to get the details so I can pay for the whole year. That is what mercy can do. I said that is what mercy can do. In the name of Jesus. Your neighbors every day, they hear you fighting with your husband. They hear you fighting, fighting, fighting. All of a sudden, they see you arm, arm in arm. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? They see you smiling. They are wondering that, ah, uh -uh, what happened? That is what mercy can do. I said tonight, may mercy shock people. I said, may mercy shock people in the name of Jesus. May mercy shock people in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Mighty God, may mercy rebuke me. May mercy shock people in the name of Jesus. May mercy shock people and may mercy rebuke me in the name of Jesus. May mercy shock people. May mercy rebuke me in the name of Jesus. May mercy shock people in the name of Jesus. May mercy shock people in the name of Jesus. Le copradia and sekita barato, Jacata libra suca pradia anta, Le cosocoto, Lica socoto, Jacata la pro socoto, Maraca socoto libra sicatoya, Masocoto libra sacatoya, Memese libuke me, Memese. Me me in the mighty name of Jesus. Me 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 in the mighty name of Jesus. Raka soko pradia anta kiamanta le kubradia anta kiamasuko pradia. Raku pradia dia. In Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus name. Have your seats. Mercy. I said we are speaking about mercy tonight. Mercy, mercy, mercy. In the name of Jesus, tonight, may mercy bring shocking results. In the name of Jesus, may mercy bring shocking results. In the name of Jesus, some of you, where you are now, you don't even know where to turn to. Everywhere around you, there are issues. I said everywhere around you, there are issues. By reason of mercy, May tomorrow may you wake up with shocking results. In the name of Jesus, by reason of mercy, everything will turn around the way you never even expected. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, some of you, you are on the verge of losing your job. Everyone knows you are supposed to be kicked out by reason of mercy. You are not going to be fired. You will actually be promoted. I said you will actually be promoted. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, everyone is saying, but when are you getting married? And you look around. There is no one, nothing. By the end of this year, you will be married in the name of Jesus. I said you will be married in the name of Jesus. Some of you, like Elizabeth, you are waiting. Lord, when am I going to have a child? You are barren, but by reason of mercy. I said by reason of mercy, you are going to conceive and you will give birth to a fine boy. In the name of Jesus, you will give birth to a fine girl. In the name of Jesus. Do you know why the neighbors and the relatives of Elizabeth came? Do you know why they came after great mercy? Mercy shocked them. Remember they were old. They were already in church. It's not like they were not in church. They were old. They were in church. Everyone knew them to be righteous people. The Bible actually calls them righteous. Righteous people. They were righteous. So everyone knew. But everyone could see that they are now old. So everyone wrote off that they can ever have a child. So I'm sure when they saw Elizabeth, mm, looks like, ah, 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 maybe she's just gaining weight. You know, ah, no, she should be just gaining weight. And then she's getting big, she's getting big, but no one really pays attention because they're thinking it should be something, maybe it's fibroids. So, you know, with time, fibroids also grow, right? So maybe fibroids are growing. But when they now head, because everything else you can hide, but the product you cannot hide because the product makes noise. So when the product came, 
and their product is making noise. Now they hear their child. They heard, ah, we hear the sound of a child. We need to go. So they were going to really witness that did we he really hear a child. So the neighbors, they came. The relatives, they came. Everyone who was backbiting. Remember, these ones are the people that are surrounding her. So they knew everything. They could see that, ah, now, now she's old. Mm, it looks like she's pregnant. Ah, it can't be. So now when they heard for themselves, the cry of the baby, they just had to go and rejoice with her. The same people who are backbiting about you today. I said the same people who are speaking so much about you today. They will come and they will rejoice with you. Mercy will shock them. In the name of Jesus, they see you every morning because you want a ride when going to the office. So it's not like you love your neighbor too much, but because you're looking for a ride, so there's nothing you can do but to go every morning. You even have to be early every morning because you need their ride. Now they will see you. Today, you are driving a range. Tomorrow, it is a Bentley. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? The other day, it is a Porsche. Are you here, somebody? They will see you. I said they will see you. In the name of Jesus, they will see you. And mercy will shock them. I said mercy will shock them. In the name of Jesus, you will be flying to France. Are you here, somebody? You will be flying to France just so that you can buy some shoes. Are you here, somebody? Just so that you just, you saw a pair of shoes online, but you just don't feel like getting it online. So you will fly all the way to France. Are you here, somebody? Not that you will be asking, oh no, you know some people will be posting, and yet they asked for that ticket. <laughs> Not that a ticket you begged for a ticket, no. You will be buying yourself a ticket. Are you here, somebody? First class. You're going to France just to buy your pair of shoes and to come back. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? That is your portion. I said that is your portion. In the name of Jesus, that is what mercy can do. I said that is what mercy can do. In the name of Jesus, time is gone for unbelievers to be envying people who don't even know God. People who don't even know God. You, you fast, you pray the whole year. You can even be fasting the whole year and nothing to show. And someone who curses on internet, they dress anyhow on internet. Actually, their dressing is undressing. Are you here, somebody? That is enough. For them, when they dress up, they have undressed. And everything about them is nice. And you who are in church, tongue talking, you know the Lord. Your life, nothing to show. That ends now. I said that ends tonight. In the name of Jesus, that ends tonight. In the name of Jesus, tonight. I said tonight, the Lord will give you shocking results. I said the Lord will give you shocking results. In the name of Jesus, we are going to pray again. That Lord, tonight, you are visiting the church with shocking results. We want to hear testimonies of shocking results. We want to hear testimonies of shocking results. That they said I have fibroids. Last time when I went, they said I cannot even conceive. Because the fibroid is growing. And now you will go to the doctor. And the doctor himself will not understand. Because he will see a heartbeat. Are you here somebody? The same fibroid. The Lord can change it to fine boys. Are you here somebody? I said the same fibroid. The Lord can change it to fine boys. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The same empty account. Your account is always empty. Are you here, somebody? Your account is always empty. The same empty account that you know when you're going in the, in the, in the shop. Me, it bothers me. When believers go in the shop with a shopping list, unless you don't want to forget. But most of the times it's because 
the money is short. So you don't want to go beyond what is in the account. You don't want when you put your card, error, E31. You don't want error number 31. Insufficient funds. Are you here, somebody? So you take your shopping list because you don't want error 31. Not after tonight. I said not after tonight. In the name of Jesus, after tonight, you will be going and you will even get more than enough. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because when you cannot show mercy, you cannot receive mercy. So now you, you know that me, I am in this problem. My sister is in the same problem. So because the Lord will shock you, you will be buying so much so that you pass by your sisters and also drop off some things. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, when mercy comes, you will be shocked. I said you will be shocked. In the name of Jesus, you will be shocked. Even your face will change. Are you here, somebody? Even your face will change. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. It is high time. I said it is high time. People should be looking at us in the church. And they should want our God. Mercy should shock you. I said mercy should shock you. In the name of Jesus. This is the year of soul winning. Do you know the easiest soul winning? Is when people see the things around you. When people see the things happening around you, they, should, they will be convicted on their own that I want your God. I want your God. Not that they look at you and they're like, eh? You are telling me about what? Salvation. So when I'm saved, I'll be looking like you. Are you here, somebody? Already they are like, ah, no, they are joking. But they should look at you. That, eh? The one who is telling me about salvation, they look like this. I better go to this church. Are you here, somebody? May the Lord bring you shocking results. In the name of Jesus, may mercy bring you shocking results. In the name of Jesus, may mercy bring you shocking results. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, some people think you are finished. Some people think you are done. Some people think, ah, this is the end. This girl, the moment she started praying, her life is just going down. She is finished, this one. They will see you. I said they will see you and they will be shocked. In the name of Jesus, they will be shocked. In the name of Jesus, may mercy shock you tonight. I said may mercy shock you. In the name of Jesus, mercy will bring you shocking results. I said mercy will bring you shocking results. In the name of Jesus, that same bank account that does not even have a thousand dollars. After tonight, millions of dollars are coming. I said millions of dollars are coming. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, now you stay in an apartment, one bedroom apartment. After tonight, you are building mansions. In the name of Jesus, I said mansions. In the name of Jesus, mansions. In the name of Jesus, you are building mansions. 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 In the name of Jesus, let mercy shock you. Let mercy shock you. Let mercy shock you. In the name of Jesus, that same relationship that is not working now, after mercy, it will work in the name of Jesus. It will work in the name of Jesus. It will work in the name of Jesus. That same child that is not doing anything after tonight he will shock you in the name of jesus may mercy shock you may mercy shock you some of you you are sick may mercy shock you in the name of jesus it doesn't matter what stage of cancer it doesn't matter what it is but may mercy shock you tonight in the name of jesus may mercy 
mercy shock you. May mercy shock you. May mercy shock you. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you tonight. Oh, yes. May the Lord shock you. In the name of Jesus. May mercy bring miraculous provisions. In the name of Jesus. May mercy transform you financially, spiritually, physically. In the name of Jesus. May mercy rebuke you. May mercy strengthen you. May mercy give you hope. In the name of Jesus. And may mercy shock you tonight. I said may mercy shock you tonight. May mercy shock you tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your family has not seen riches. They will see it from you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are getting out of that house. You are going into a mansion. I said you are going into a mansion. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, your payments are delaying. It is delay after delay after delay. May mercy shock you tonight. In the name of Jesus. May mercy shock you tonight. One by one, everyone will pay you. I said one by one, everyone will pay you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, in this season of mercy, I said in this season of mercy, you will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.